Everybody, this is Michael Campbell, and I'm the founder of Glossica, and I'm uh, filming this video to talk about uh, typing on Glossica. So we have certain skills. For example, when you uh, when you come up on a new sentence, uh, you're either requested to type out the answer or actually do a dictation. Uh, so the way we've designed this is that uh, when you see a sentence written in a different script, um, you know, because everybody's goals are different, like for example, some people they're not really uh, into like learning the, uh, for example, the Chinese characters of Chinese. They just want to learn how to speak the language. And we provide a, a, a way, we provide an entry for you to uh, get into the language without having to learn the script. So even though we'll actually show the the script of the language on there, um, when you're you're first learning it, we also provide you the pronunciation with pinyin guides, or if it's a different language like Cyrillic. Um, for example, if it's written in Russian or if it's in Arabic, uh, we provide those those pronunciation guides for you. Now, the second thing to remember is that you don't not, you don't have to provide us the answer in the native script. So, for example, um, if you want to just learn how to uh, um, uh, provide the answers through the script uh, through the romanization, that's possible. But keep in mind that we the the answers will accept. Uh, the original script of the language or the romanization and in some cases like Japanese would provide uh, a, a way that you can um, you can provide the kanji as your answer um, the hiragana as your answer or different kinds of romanizations um, we support now for katakana it has to be in katakana you can't switch to hiragana so th there's a reason for that if you're learning a language you probably know the reason why um, and then for languages like um, Russian we actually provide um, uh, kind of like a fuzzy match between whether something's palatal or not so you don't always have to put in all of the extra J's in there you can also type out your answer directly in Russian as well no problem with that Georgian as well um, yeah the thing is with Georgian uh, we got a comment from somebody who said uh, our Georgian programs all wrong and everything because um, when he typed in the answer for um, for one of the sentences it was like the, the Kremlin is in Moscow um, his answer was actually using the wrong K in the Georgian alphabet. There's two kinds, and foreign words in Georgian are always pronounced with the popping, the ejective sound. So um, Moscow and Kremlin both have that ejective K. It uses a different letter of the alphabet. So remember that if you're typing in the, um, the native script, you need to type in uh, that spelling correctly. Now, when it comes to punctuation, though, punctuation is a different issue. Punctuation, sometimes you don't know if a if that sentence was actually two sentences or was it one sentence with a comma in between it all of these kinds of things not really necessary for trying to get the answer right right so uh, punctuation is um, you don't have to you don't have to type out your sentences with punctuation you don't have to type your sentences with capital letters uh, so you can leave those off and in fact um, it kind of helps you get in the uh, the answer quicker as well so you can save time especially if you're going to be doing that rep many many times uh, the other thing to remember is that um, even though uh, French is strict about putting that space between the colon, a space be uh, before the, the question mark, we've been getting complaints from users saying that um, they use German and Italian just fine, but whenever, every, every time they use French, there, there's this, there's this um, crazy reason why we have to add a space in between. Um, so we might actually add a, a feature there where we provide uh, that space as um, as what do you call it just optional like it won't be required um, but according to Ac Académie uh, Française that's the rule of French uh, may not be true in other countries that speak French but you know in the standard language that's their rule um, likewise for German you can type out your umlaut letters with a e o u uh, o, -O, -O -E or u e um, the s set is a double s uh, let's see with German, you can also type, and with any of our languages, all of the diacritics, whether they're accents, circumflexes, or umlauts, you can type the base letter. So you can type in a German umlauted U as a U-E, or just as a U. Uh, even though that's wrong, uh, we've gotten a lot of pushback from users saying that's what they want. So we've been just kind of like, well, it's wrong, but okay, we'll, we'll provide it to you just because... Um, assuming that you know better, right? And, and besides, you, you're going to see that script on the screen every time. It's going to be reminded in the in the teach um, line below the, the input field as well. Every time you come across that, 
you're going to be reminded of the correct way. Um, so we, we have built in some flexibility across languages to accept different kinds of answers. Um, with, with like Vietnamese keyboards, the, the Vietnamese keyboards are, um, there's, there's been old versions, there's been new versions. We're also trying to work out this problem with Burmese as well. But um, with, um, with Vietnamese, you have old input methods and we're trying to figure out if the, the old input methods will be allowed. Uh, so we had to do some kind of um, some legacy mappings on all of the letters in order to allow that uh, to work properly. Uh, and also with Vietnamese, you have like dialectal stuff. So we, um, I'll, I'll make a separate video about that, um, going into all of the things we've fixed in Vietnamese. Um, but um, yeah, I think I could probably make a separate video for every single language. There's there's just a lot of stuff to cover with with every specific language. Um, but with the with the um, the legacy systems, we provide, for example, a, a Unicode code point, which is a single um, stacked character for the Vietnamese letters. You can also type in the base letter. So even with the, the, the U and O that have the hook, uh, you don't have to type in U and O with the hook. You can just type in U, like Dung, D-U-O-N-G. You can just type that in and it, it'll pass as correct. Um, so even if you forget your tone for the letter, you can just type in. So the thing is with the, with the stacking though, is that if you type in the A with the circumflex uh, and it has a tone, you better type in the tone because we don't, we don't, it's not a cascade where like, oh, you can take off the tone, we'll also accept it with the circumflex. You just, you, it's either you take off everything off the top and you type in the base letter as the A. Um, and, and then, you know, that'll work for, at the beginning of sentences, also for capital letters as well. And so there's like a, the old system, the new system, all of those should pass. And if you come across a sentence, it's like, it's just not working, it's not passing. We can go in and there and we can open it up and say, oh, we, we see the problem, we can fix it immediately. Um, just as long as you let us know if something is um, not passing and it's and it's um, it's getting stuck in the system, and if it's a if it's like a fatal error type of thing, we or it, the sentence is just wrong, we'll probably just have to remove it and have the uh, the native translator just work on it again. Um, for example, if the the recording is off or something like that, uh, we've pretty much removed most of those issues. And if you encounter one of those, we'll send it back to the translator and have them redo it. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. Um, let's see. Yeah, with the punctuation, uh, you can leave the punctuation off. It's not really necessary, you know, in your language learning. But if you're going to be learning a language like French, you should uh, be you should be aware that how how punctuation is actually different in the language. Uh, we don't provide. I don't. I don't think we currently have fuzzy input for all the different kinds of quotation marks because they have like uh, I think they're called guillemet. The those are used. In, in Russian and French and, and German has the, the up and down quotes, quotes um, kind of, they, they flip out, um, flip out in a, not in the slang uh, meaning, but um, so yeah, you, you should be able to, um, you should be aware that every language has its own set of, um, you know, the, these kinds of um, symbols. Uh, let's see. I think right off the top of my head, there's a, another language that has a special symbol, which is Catalan. So Catalan has um, the double L, like in Spanish, is sometimes actually pronounced, and you put a dot between those two L's. So w of course we uh, accept that input, and I and I'm gonna have to call up my um, files, but I think that we we do provide uh, a different kind of way that you can input that either, either with a dot or a dash or something like that. Um, I'll probably have to make a separate video specifically for, for that language, uh, and let you know what that is. But right now the capitalization is not, uh, is not specifically necessary in German. Uh, we've removed, uh, that necessity. When we first launched, we had capitalization as a requirement in German, but we've, um, we've gotten rid of that just because of user feedback and pushback from the audience. So let us know um, your feedback, let us know. Uh, you can write us through the intercom symbol on the website uh, directly through to customer service. Let us know your your feelings um, about the, you know, the usability of the system and we'll uh, make updates and things um, that will make it more user friendly. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channels um, and also hop on over to our phonics channel. I'll be adding some new videos over there as well, discussing pronunciations in a variety of different languages. Thanks for watching.